Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions on this Monday, February 13th. Monday the 13th. Ugh. That's worse than Friday the 13th in my mind. Hey, I'm glad you're here with us to spend a little time in God's Word on this Monday morning. Uh, overcast and kind of gloomy here in Wisconsin, but the temperature is rising slowly, which is a good thing. Um, I want it to be a little warmer. I got to go out in the garage today and finally crawl under my wife's car and get her alternator changed out so I can reclaim my truck from her. Not that I've been driving my truck much. Fuel prices being what they are. But um, by that same token, she needs to be driving her car because it does <clears throat> better on gas. But it's a, you know, it's a Ford. I mean, it, I, I call it a Volvo, but it's a Ford. And the alternator is behind and underneath the engine. So I basically have to take the car apart in order to change out the alternator, which just seems silly to me. But modern cars are not designed to be worked on or fixed. They're designed to be traded off and buy a new one. But some of us can't do that. I bet some of you can't either. So anyway, good morning. February 13th, we're back in the saddle here. Let's see who's with us. Leela, good morning. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Uh, yeah, there's Jerry. Jerry, good morning. 36 over there, huh? And I, I think we're well, the, the weather service says 30. Um, my thermometer said 28 when I was in the kitchen last, but that was a while ago already. Um, and good morning to you and Grant and Deb. Renee, good morning. Sun shining there. Yeah, we had a beautiful day yesterday. In fact, I had a funeral on Saturday, and um, it was in the 40s, and uh, I had no problem going uh, out to the graveside to do the committal, meaning that the temperatures were just, just wonderful. Uh, Verna, good morning. Connie and Robin, good morning. Yeah, we're not going to go and do any fishing because by the time I'm done with that alternator, I'm not going to be uh, <clears throat> uh, in the mood, shall I say. Kathy, good morning. Um, beautiful sunny day for you. Glenn, good morning to you. And uh, let me refresh here and just see if anyone else tuned in. I got my other laptop running over here just to see. I see Michael has joined us as well. Now, it's updating over there, but I'm just watching it over there. Michael, good morning to you and Karen. You're at the ball cart park manning the gate, huh? Okay. And Kendra, good morning to you as well. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this. If you have the Lutheran service book, page 295, I have my Treasury of Daily Prayer uh, the uh, morning of daily, the morning of the order of daily prayer morning is what we use here today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Um, uh, Debbie and Grant listening in stereo. <laughs> as long as the timing doesn't get off and it starts to echo against each other. Uh, our psalm today, Psalm 95, verses 1 through the first part of verse 7. Uh, oh, no, first, first a uh, 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 commemoration. Today we remember Aqu Aquila, Priscilla, and Apollos. Um, uh, tomorrow's going to be Valentinus. Um, Aquila and his wife Priscilla, also known in another place as Prisca, our Jewish contemporaries with St. Paul, they traveled widely. And because of the persecution in Rome, uh, they went to Corinth, where they met the Apostle Paul, who joined them in their trade of tent making. This is why Paul says we uh, earned livings with our own hands. In turn, they joined Paul in his mission of, of proclaiming the Christian gospel. 
and the couple later traveled with Paul from Corinth to Ephesus, where the two of them established a home that served as a hospitality and headquarters for new converts to Christianity. Apollos was one of their numerous Jewish pupils in the faith. An eloquent man, Apollos, being fervent in spirit, spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus. Uh, he later traveled from Corinth to the province of Achaia, showing by the scriptures that Christ was Jesus. Uh, Aquila, Priscilla, and Apollos are all remembered and honored for their great missionary zeal. So today we commemorate Aquila, Priscilla, and Apollos. All right, our Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7a. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. That is, um, that's a liturgical hymn as well. I mean, I've said it before, the, the, the psalm book, um, uh, the, 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 the psalms are the song book of the Bible. But in the uh, order of matins, I guess you guys probably can't see it because the lights are so intense on the paper. But in the order of, of matins, the venite um, that we sing um, is, uh, is taken from Psalm 95. Um, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. I, never mind. You can all cover your ears. Your dogs are howling. It's amazing because I can sing it on Sunday morning, but any other time. Probably because I'm trying too hard. Anyway, Psalm 95, not only a, not only a psalm that we use here, but also a a liturgical song used in worship services. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. All right, let's move on to Job. Um, we've missed a little of Job because um, I was gone on Saturday. We skipped over Sunday. And what we missed, you know, and the understanding here is that we're not reading all and everything. Um, but on Saturday, uh, Saturday, Job continued in chapter 7 um, that his life was without hope. Uh, he said, remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never again see God, see good. The eye of him who sees me will behold me no more. While your eyes are on me, I shall be gone. And so he laments uh, his life again as he did in the first part. And then, and then his friend Bildad gets an opportunity to uh, speak to him. Bildad the Shuhite um, calls him to repent. Um, he calls him to repent. Let me see if I can find the key verse here. Uh, does God pervert justice or does the Almighty pervert the right? If your children have sinned against him, he has delivered them into the hand of their transgression. If you will seek God and plead with the Almighty for mercy, if you are pure and upright, surely he will rouse himself for you and restore your rightful habitation. And though your beginning was small, your latter days will be great. So Bildad calls him uh, for to repent. Um, but the, the, the problem is, and you and I know this because we've been watching Job from the beginning here, he didn't do anything wrong. There's, he has nothing to repent of. I'm not saying he's sinless. I'm saying that, that the things that have happened to him are not a result of his sinning. 
the, the Lord said, have you seen my servant Job? And Satan said, oh yeah, but you protect him. And God allowed Satan to go upon him and test him. He's done, he hasn't sinned. In fact, even in the, at the, at the lowest point when he began to sit in the uh, ashes and sackcloth and scrape the sores off his body with pot shards, he did not curse God. Um, we missed the part because it was on a Sunday where his wife walks up to him and says, why don't you just curse God and die? Um, but that's not what Job does. He remains faithful. So, so Job now replies in chapter 9 uh, to his friends again. So 9 this is a little longer, verses 1 through 35. Good thing it's a Monday. <clears throat> then Job answered and said, Truly I know that it is so. But how can a man be made how can a man be in the right before God? If one wished to contend with him, one could not answer him once in a thousand times. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who has hardened himself against him and succeeded? He who removes mountains, they know it know it not. When he overturns them in his anger, who shakes the earth out of its place, and its pillars tremble who commands the sun and it does not rise, who seals up the stars, who alone stretches out the heavens and trampled the waves of the sea, who made the bear and Orion, the Pleiades and the chambers of the south, who does great things beyond searching out and marvelous things beyond number. Behold, he passes by me and I see him not. He moves on, but I do not perceive him. Behold, he snatches away. Who can turn him back? Who will say to him, what are you doing? God will not turn back his anger. Beneath him bowed the helpers of Rahab. How then can I answer him, choosing my words with him? Though I am in the right, I cannot answer him. I must appeal for mercy to my accuser. If I summoned him and he answered me, I would not believe that he was listening to my voice. For he crushes me with a tempest and multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not let me get breath, but fills me with bitterness. If it is a contest of strength, behold, he is mighty. If it is a matter of justice, who can summon him? Though I am in the right, my own mouth would condemn me. Though I am blameless, he would prove me perverse. I am blameless. I regard not myself. I loathe my life. It is, a, it is all one. Therefore, I say, he destroys both the blameless and the wicked. When disaster brings sudden death, he mocks the calamity of the innocent. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of its judges. If it is not he... Who then is it? My days are swifter than a runner. They flee away. They see no good. They go by like skiffs of reed, like an eagle swooping on the prey. If I say I will forget my complaint, I will put off my sad face and be of good cheer. I become afraid of all my suffering, for I know you will not hold me innocent. I shall be condemned. Why then do I labor in vain? If I wash myself with snow and cleanse my hands with lye, yet you will plunge me into a pit, and my own clothes will abhor me. For he is not a man as I am, that I might answer him, that we should come to trial together. There is no arbiter between us who might lay his hand on us both. Let him take his rod away from me, and let not dread of him terrify me. Then I would speak without fear of him, for I am not so in myself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Job understands the situation very well. Sometimes we don't. Hey, Mushtaq, good evening and morning. Job understands the situation. Um, you, you you can't, he can't as a man, right? And he says that, I am a man. He is not a man as I am. 
you cannot take your complaints to the creator of the heaven and the earth and expect him by your will to listen. Who is he? Who, who is man to go before God and say, hear me? Uh, he is the one who rocks the hills, inverts the mountains, set up the stars in the heavens. He is the one who does things that are so great they are beyond our searching. Who are we to call him to turn back his anger? God will not turn it back once it is lightly is loosed. And though though the one coming might be in the right, and Job is in the right, we said that. He, he has committed no sin other than the fact that he is a descendant of Adam in whom uh, sin began to dwell. No, you can't go before God and say, I demand justice from you. But you can appeal for mercy. You can plead with the judge to be forgiving. But now, now, through Christ Jesus, you and I do have a mediator. He is the only mediator between God and man. We can bring our complaints before Christ, who is man and God. And he takes them before the Father. In fact, he has invited us to take them to the Father himself, and he will stand with us. That's the joy we have in Christ. And Job knows that this will come one day. He knows the promises, but he also knows that it has not yet come. And so he's relying on what is not yet for his needs. No, he says, if it, let, him, let him take his rod away from me. Let him not... Let the dread of him not terrify me. Then I would speak. Then I could stand before without fear of him. Uh, but not, not so as he is, not in himself. We start with the first commandment. I am the Lord, or, uh, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no gods before me. Um, and the fear of the Lord strikes us, or it ought to. Luther said, we are to fear, love, and trust in God, fear, love, and trust in God above all things, above everything that's in creation. Fear, love, and trust, all of those things together, right? And that fear is a recognition that he is God, that he is capable of destroying everything that's here, and he one day will. Spend some time in Isaiah and Revelation, and you'll see it. He one day will, but he's also merciful. His nature is a nature of creating and forgiving and loving. And so not only do we fear him, but we love him. Our, by our fallen nature, we're incapable of it. But in Christ, we've been given the ability to love God and to see him. Uh, well, Luther says in the command to pray that, that uh, we, are, we are his dear children and we come to him as our dear father when we pray to him. And so we love him. And as a child trusts a faithful parent, we trust God that he will do things for us. He will do all things for us. Fear, love, and trust. And certainly Job has the idea of fear down. He knows that he is righteous. He knows that he is blameless. He knows that he has done the things that are required of him, is, has feared God in wisdom. But he also knows that he holds no sway with God, that he fears God, and that God is far more than he is. And as a man, he cannot stand before him, but rather must bow and ask for God's mercy. And he also knows by trust that God will give that mercy to him, but it can't be assumed. It must be received cannot presume upon God's mercy or we would just go freely on sinning. Cannot presume upon it, but we can trust in him to be faithful. For when we, when, when we are faithless, God remains faithful. Job trusts 
with God. His friends accuse, but he trusts in God. That's where we stand. We are not perfect. We are not sinless. But in Christ, we have been made pure, clean, cleansed of our sins, and able to come before our Heavenly Father through Christ our Lord to present our complaint and receive his mercy through the blood of Christ. Amen. That's where we're going to call that today. Let's go to our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Triune God, whose very name is holy, teach us to be faithful hearers and learners of your word, fervent in the spirit as Apollos was, that we may teach it correctly against those who have been led astray into falsehood and error, and that we might follow the example of Aquila and Priscilla for the good of the church you established here and entrusted into our humble care. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. And we'll continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, I will, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Oops, I'll lose my bookmark. On this Monday morning for ourselves and others in the... This uh, third week of February already? Sure enough. Let us pray. At the beginning of another week of work, I ask you, good Lord, to remember me in your mercy and to look with favor upon my activity. Strengthen my faith, increase my hope, and nourish my love for you and for all people. Preserve me from pride, for you resist the proud, and give grace only to the humble. Teach me to cast all my cares on you, for you have promised to care for me. Keep me from the love of money, lest I err from the faith and pierce myself through with many sorrows. Watch over me in moments of danger and temptation, and help me to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, my God. Thank you for the opportunities I have to be a blessing to others and to be blessed by you this week. Let me rejoice in every chance to do good, and let me bear with patient forgiveness any evil done to me. Do not give me tasks equal to my strength, but strength equal to my tasks. Grant me the grace to live today as though it were my last day on earth and the first with you in heaven. Hear me for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, my Lord. Amen. We pray also, Lord, for those who suffer this day whether it be the effects of age or injury or illness. We ask, Lord, that you hear their prayers and that you strengthen them in their time of need, granting them comfort in the promise of your Son and the assurance that you hear their prayers. Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, and those who continue to suffer in the natural disasters in Turkey and Syria as the time of saving people while they are still alive under rubble is drawing short. Remind them always of the mercy that you have in Christ and that though they may die in this life through you and in you, they have the promise of eternal life. Grant them this in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, 
We implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that brings our devotion to a close for this Monday, Friday, February, or Monday, February 13th. Um, tomorrow's Tuesday, Greek Tuesday. Or is it Winkle? Well, either way, God's peace be with you, and I'll see you back here uh, tomorrow morning. Fear God, love him, and trust. God's peace be with you.